Hello everyone, um, as you can probably tell by the um, video title, um, I have bought another car. Surprise, surprise. Um, car YouTuber can't resist buying another car. Shock. Um, it is not the Fiat Panda behind me. That still belongs to um, my friend Scott. Um, although I would love a Panda 100 HP one day, but anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about this. Um, yeah, it's not quite complete. Um, the parts are there and the car is there. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, here it is. It's a Mark II Golf GTI. Red pinstriping, in case you can't tell. Um, it's I, This is exactly how I bought it. I haven't touched it um, since I bought it, it just, it's come down to the unit. Um, these are for a, a rollover jig that um, it came with. Um, but yeah, it is, I mean, it is completely, it's stripped, stripped. Um, those are just the seats that I've put in there for now. And that is not even a golf dash, that's a Shroko dash. Um, I'm just using it for storage at the moment. So, yes, this is my new car. I mean, I mean it has four wheels. And a, technically five, it has a steel wheel as well. Um, but yeah, it's a 989 Mark II Golf GTI small bumper 8 valve. Well, no valves currently, but um, it was an 8 valve at one point. Um, so it's a really interesting story behind this that I've been quite looking forward to telling. Um, so um, get a cuppa and I'll tell you the story. So the story of this car is it's actually been in my life for about... 15 years um, and now it's mine so it's it's kind of it's kind of strange so this be used to belong to my next owner this son um, he bought it in 2007 um, he bought it from a family who had owned it from new um, in Fleetwood near Blackpool and he bought it as his, his runabout his only car I think he paid according to the paperwork 800 pounds or something like that in 2007 um, and it was his runabout um, up until about either 2009, 2010. Um, I don't know exactly, but according to the um, street view, the car in 2009 on street view, the car is parked in a position where it would have been used. <laughs> um, but then the MOT ran out in 2010. So somewhere between June 2009 and whatever month of 2010, the MOT ran out, um, the car came off the road because there is a nasty bit of damage on this B driver's B pillar over there, um, which I'll put in now. Um, so basically what happened was somebody tried to break into it. Um, if I'm remembering the story correctly, if you're watching um, and I'm getting this wrong, feel free to correct me. Um, someone tried to break into it and they made a horrible mess of the B pillar and he was a broke student at the time. Um, and couldn't afford to get it fixed. Um, couldn't really drive it around like that. There's a big um, dent in the pillar um, and so he parked it up and that's where it stayed for many many years um, you know obviously with uni no money and blah blah blah, blah. and then I, at one point you know he got quite seriously ill so the car just sort of stood um, and so I live I'm not going to dox myself and post photos but I live on a terrace and I live second from the end and then the next door neighbour whose son this is live on the end and they have like a, a drive next to their house and that's where this was parked, on the little driveway at the side of the house. I'm not sure exactly how long it was parked there, um, because uh, both of that memories are rubbish. Um, but I know on the Street View for 2019, when it was next updated on our street, the car is no longer there. So it can't be more than nine years it was that there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it basically just sat outside for about eight or nine years. Um, and when I was a teenager, I used to see it all the time. I used to be like, oh God, you know, what's he doing with it? I want it. I'll, I'll fix it up. Um, obviously, it was complete at the time. It wasn't in this state. Um, you know, and my next neighbor's, well, the son's mum, my next door neighbor, was like, you know, you can get rid of it for me. I'm sick of the sight of it. Because <laughs> um, they're quite a, a bit of a Pexhead family. Um, they've always had VWs. They still do have VWs. Um, and a couple of Morris Miners and stuff like that. So. But yeah, I think his mum was just kind of sick of the sight of it. And I was like, what is he doing with it? And he was like, no, I don't want to sell it. 
Um, so yeah, and then I think maybe in 2019 or so, um, he got a garage built for it. Again, at the side of the house, there's like a row of garages at the side of the house. Um, and he put it in there. And then I think in the last couple of years or so, with like lockdowns and stuff, he decided that he wanted to strip it and rebuild it and get it back on the road. Which is why it's in the state it's in now. Um, and I, you know, it came around a few times. I've, like, you know, lent him some tools and stuff like that. And um, it seemed to be going well. And then one evening last summer, um, he came round and said that um, I've decided that it's too much for me. You know, he um, he bought a rollover jig, which is where you can see these little thingies. Um, and he was reassured by people who made it that it would fit in his garage and he'd be able to turn it over and blah, 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 blah. He got it all, bought it all, built it all up, went to turn the car over. It won't turn over. <laughs> There's no room. So he came around and was like, it's too much for me. You know, I don't have the time, the resources the space whatever you know I've just had enough of it do you want it and then he gave me uh, two pieces of A4 paper full of all the stuff that he had for it and he just wanted everything gone he was like I'd rather it went to someone like you because you know listing everything on eBay is a pain in the backside and I'd rather you know you had it so I've got the I've got the paper here the two pieces of A4 paper I mean there's full on there's full on paragraphs here of everything that he's got for the car um so we've got the garage that it was in an audi two liter bottom end which i still need to get to know actually um four sebring alloys um the golf itself um and then all the these are all like the bits and the spares from the golf and everything um and he was just like i just want it gone you know that's that's what's available i'll let you think about it and so I I thought about it and I thought, I mean, I know that, that car's going to stood for years. It's going to be an absolute rock box. You know, I I don't have the time for something like that. Not in a kind of chance. I'm like, I'll have the garage, definitely, obviously. Um, but like the car's too far gone. You know, I can't have that. And then oh. I made the um, silly mistake of tweeting about it. And a lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but I genuinely, when I tweeted about this car, I didn't want it. I have no interest in it. I, I was like, it's too far. God, it's too much of a project. I don't have time for that. It's it's too much for me. And then I think I got about 70 plus replies of people um, saying, get it. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'm easily led. Um, so I thought, right, I'll go around and have a look at it. I'll have a look around it. I'll see what it needs. And I went to look around it. And you'll see when I show you around it in a minute. I would argue that this car is in better condition than my Scirocco, and I'm not joking. Mainly because the Scirocco has a big massive body kit on it that's hiding a lot of nasties, but genuinely, considering how long this was stood outside, I can't believe how good condition it's in. Um, like I say, I'll show you around in a minute, but it must have been absolutely mint when he parked it up, because it is in really good condition. And I don't know if I should say this, <laughs> um, but... Everything, the garage, the golf, all the spares, everything with it. He wanted to charge me two grand for all of that. And I was like, I mean, I'd be stupid not to, you know, just, just get it. And then if it becomes too much, I can always sell it on. So, um, there's probably gonna be a lot of people watching that thinking, what? Like the garage alone will be worth more than that somewhere else. So I think I would have been absolutely insane to say no, so very fortunate that I managed to get this <laughs> so um yeah I'll show you around it I'll show you how solid it actually is so um obviously the wings and all this lot are all missing they're in the garage at home they're a bit crusty but um so this is again that is all surface rust and you've got your battery tray here that's pretty solid um again this like, I can't put my finger through that. It's just surface rust. Um, strut tops. Surface rust. Oh, look, they've got new, fairly new shock tops, actually. Well, they'll be like 10 years old now, but probably new at the time it was parked up. Um, stuff frame's a bit crusty, but again, you can quite easily get that powder coated and everything. 
Um, this bit here, I've been told, is very common on the Mark II Golf. And this was the area that sort of scared him the most and put him off the most. Um, but upon closer inspection, that again is just surface rust. I cannot, it's not even flexing a little bit, like I cannot poke through that at all. Um, he was worried that he'd have to like cut all of this out and weld new bits in. And obviously, cutting a location like that is not great, but honestly, that is solid. Um, so we come down here again, a little bit of surface rust, a little bit of surface rust. Let me show you the sills. I'm gonna have to get down to the floor here now, but let me show you these sills. Like, not even surface rust on them. Because it's a small bumper, it doesn't have the big body kit. So all it has is like some little tiny arch covers that would go here. But even then, there's, um, there's a tiny bit there at the bottom that's sort of flaking a bit. But everything else inside, like I am, I am pulling on that and there's nothing. Again, tiny little bit of crustiness here. But everything else is good. Like, <laughs> when I l was looking around it, I was like, oh my god, this is actually solid. Um, yeah, a little bit of bubbling here where the wiper mower went and everything. But that's, again, common. Um, and again, just <laughs> on this side, so, th so the weight was parked. It was parked facing downhill. This side was like against a fence. It was parked on concrete, so it was never in grass or anything like that. This side was against like the garden fence. And then this side was exposed. So this side's got a bit oxidized on here. Um, and the window frame here is quite crusty. Those bits there, like that bit's probably the worst bit. That's gonna need a new bit putting in. There's the B pillar again. It's, um, he really went to town on it. They really, they really wanted to get into it, I think. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said to me that he um, annoyed the wrong people. And um, they wanted to get a bit of revenge, I guess. And just made a right mold mess of it. But there is a new section of this. Um, over there on the bottom shelf somewhere. That goes from like here to here. So I can just cut that out and weld that in. Um, but yeah, like even the floors tiny bit of surface rust where the drain holes have been that's easily treatable again tiny bits of surface rust but it is <laughs> it is incredible how solid this car is again just it's mainly just surface rust like that's pretty bad i could probably cut that out and put some bits in yeah like it's even it's got a sunroof and even that it's like, all we have is this bit of surface rust. That is very easily treatable. It is just incredible how solid this car is. It's, um... Like, when I say it's more solid than my truck, I'm not joking. Uh, so I've got a torch. It's a bit better viewing. Um, again, a little bit of surface rust. Nothing too major. But yeah, that, that sill, I'll try and get some better shots of this sill with a torch so you can actually see. But yeah, that is, it's, it's solid. Um, it started taking off the um, under seal, as you can see here, it started removing that. That's pretty much clean underneath. Just a few bits of surface rust. But, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> even around the subframe, 
no rot, just little just little bits of orange. But they're easily treatable. Is that it's solid? It's just it's just incredible, really. Seeing how long this cow was sat outside. Now there's also a bit in the fuel filler down here. Ooh. Down here, um, I don't know if you can really see it, but basically the brackets that hold the fuel filler neck on have snapped off, so they'll need new ones welding on. But yeah, like it's just when I mean, you can't see because the um, all the interior bits that I've put in now. But even the spare wheel well is solid. It's just it's just incredible, really. Now this is all the original paperwork I was given with the car. Um, there's no um, service book or like that, but there are two identical manuals. Um, not sure why there's two, but anyway. Um, I'll try not to leak any documents here, but basically, like all of the paperwork from when he had it is like genuine from the dealers. We've got like an, an Audi invoice. We've got a genuine Volkswagen invoice. Like every time he wanted something for it, he got it from the dealers if he could. Um, and also, this was included in paperwork. Um, I believe these are spec sheets or something like that that tell you all the original specs that it came with. Unfortunately, I don't understand German, um, but I'm sure I can decipher that at some point uh, and find out all of the original equipment that it came with. So that's cool. Um, I don't know if the previous owners had that or if he found that while stripping it. It could well have done. Let's see what we've got actually. Should we have a, have a little bit of a look in it? Um, that's GSF. <laughs> but yeah, like Rich Alexander, Rich Alexander. Bolt's workshop. So... Go here. I'll try not to leak any personal details here. Oh, Parrot hands free kit now available. Oh, they're 185 pounds, including fat. Ooh. Uh, 2008, we've got a clip and a bracket. Um, what else have we got? We've got another Volkswagen invoice for a sensor. That was in 2008. 2009. We've got a thermostat, genuine thermostat, what's field VW, what is field VW, just like everything that he could was bought from the dealer. Um, what else have we got? What's, what's from Vox Workshop? Is that when he had it? Oh no, that's before he had it. That's the previous owner for a sump, engine oil, radiator flush, antifreeze. Um, Use a manual for the immobilizer. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ancient immobilizers. Um, oh, that's acknowledgement that it's sawn. What's this? Immobilizer fitting. Ooh. Oh, he had that done. Maybe they have that done. Mm, auto electric place. Um, what else? What else? What else? Yeah, we have two instruction manuals here. I don't know why. What's this? Oh. There's the, um... <laughs> There's operating instructions for the radio that's in it. And I have this exact same radio in the Shroko. I bought it off eBay for 40 quid. Maybe I should um, read this, actually. I had some trouble playing my Madonna cassette on the way to the NEC the other week. I got it working eventually, but... Do my editing a bit, really. I really wanted this to be done. Um, <clears throat> and then we have old MOTs, I think, old blue log book. Oh, here we go. Received £850 for VW Golf on the 13th of May 2007. And then old MOT certificate. So, I mean, a, a fairly decent amount of original paperwork. Uh, no original service books, not like that, but. None of my other cars, my other old cars have that anyway. So yeah, that's just a, 
a quick look around the new car on the fleet, um, the new project, unexpected project. I wasn't planning on buying a um, golf shell, but hey ho. Um, you know, it's kind of mad to think that I actually own this after looking at it as a teenager, looking sorry for itself, you know, parked outside for however many years it was. And now it's finally mine, albeit in kit form. But hey, I can say that I own a Golf GTI now, I guess. Nobody else needs to know that it's just a shell. It has its wheels on and suspension components. What more do you want? Um, the plan is to obviously restore it, but um, the plan is to keep it pretty much standard. Um, I'm probably going to put the Sebring alloys that it came with, because um, these are just the standard GTI steelies. Um, or I might keep both. I don't know. I already have enough wheels. My auto stars that are over there still haven't sold. Um, so if you want those wheels, please. Please buy them. I'm, well, I'm not desperate to sell them, but like, come on, guys. Anyway. Um, so yeah, the plan is to keep it standard. I know people keep telling me to do all these crazy things with it. I'm not going to put a wide body kit on it before you say it again. I'm keeping it standard because otherwise... I also think that my neighbour's son will probably never speak to me ever again. Um, and he actually has he actually has a lot of knowledge about these. Um, a lot more than I do. Um, on Boxing Day, <laughs> um, he came around with a USB stick of nearly 300 photos of all the stuff that he'd taken off. Um, like, the way that he shook this down, all the wiring is pretty much labelled, I think. Oh, the wiring's not in anymore. Um... You know, he, he labelled as many things as he could, he took as many photos as he could. He even gave me, like, multiple folders of all the OEM part numbers for bolts, screws, things that snap, things that don't quite look as good as they should. You know, like the, the gear knob, the resin on top's got a crack in it. He's giving me a part number for a new one, he's going to get a new one. Like, this, he was so, you know detailed with it he probably did a way better job than I would have done stripping it down because when I strip stuff down I get a bit excited and once I start I kind of forget to label things or put things I mean I always keep the bolts in the same piles I just don't necessarily always have where they go so he's actually done a really good job of stripping this down and he has so much knowledge about these cars um so I will probably be asking him quite a few questions and stuff like that but um, it, all, it came with a few a few sporty upgrades. I think the the head that came off it had a Shriek cam, if I'm saying that right. Like an abraded cam. Um, it came with a sports exhaust. It obviously had the 2 litre bottom end as a spare. All the stuff like that, I'll probably end up putting in the Shroko. Um Oh, it came with um, a set of 16 valve brakes as well. Because um, it just has a standard 8 valve ones. Again, I'm probably going to put stuff like that on the Shroko And just keep this as close to standard as possible, except for the alloys, and I might keep the sports exhaust in it as well, because we all love a, a nice sturdy exhaust. But yeah, I'm actually excited but also nervous, because um, I've, I've never done any kind of restoration like this. You know, I'm a mechanic, I'm not a restorer. I've never done, well, I've kind of done a little bit of bodywork. We all saw how that went in the Radwood video. So this is completely new to me. I don't really know where to start, to be completely honest with you. Um, I guess get rid of the rust first. Um, what's the best plan for getting rid of rust, guys? Just a, a rust killer and primer? Or, you know, grind as much as you can to bare metal? Put a neutralizer on it? Is, is that what you do? I don't know. People who are a lot more knowledgeable than me, please feel free to give me some tips on the best places to start, the best products to use. Um, I've been watching a lot of white restoration videos, so I'm going to be taking a lot of inspiration from those guys. I just want to do that under seal thing in all the cavities and slowly pull the straw out. I just want to do that. That does look really fun. Um, so yeah, very excited, slightly nervous. Um, I don't have like a deadline or a plan for this or anything. I just want to take my time, learn as I go. And then once this is done, the plan is, once this is done, get it on the road, then take the shrock off the road and do the same thing with that. Because um, I mean, if I learn on this, I've got nothing to lose on this. You know, it's not like I'm desperate to be off on the road. It's desperate I want to drive it. Obviously, I do want to at some point. But, you know, I have nothing to lose with this. So I'm going to learn the bodywork, restoration stuff. Um, and then go from there. So yeah, exciting stuff.
Um, that's that's about it, really. I can't think of anything else to say. Uh, if you've got any more questions about the car or anything else you'd like to know about it, you know, feel free to ask. Um, I've probably left loads of details out. I was going to write it down, but then I didn't because um, I couldn't think of what to write down. I'm great at this YouTube thing. I really am. Um, so, yeah, subscribe for more golf content. There will be more golf content coming. Um, I think we're, we're closing in on the um, fabled 1,000 number. Um, I don't know if my life changes at that point. Probably won't. Um, but, yeah, subscribe. Like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, then don't. I don't know why you wouldn't like it, though. I mean, it's, it's a cool old car. What's not to like? Um, and yeah, just stay, stay tuned for more golf content. I'm going to be a, a restorer YouTuber now. YouTuber restorer person. I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. You'll be learning with me. I don't know what I'm doing. Please don't come here for tutorials. Please. I'm not liable. I'm not liable. Um, so yeah. See you in the next video where I'm probably going to be talking about with this and not having a clue what I'm doing. <laughs>